using laser light to measure distances is an incredible technology. Today we will test a rangefinder which does precisely that. Up to 1500 meters in full sun, if we believe the glossy leaflets. And we will take it apart. Great YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. In video number 119, I started with time of flight technology or TOF. In video number 203, I tested three LiDAR sensors. And in video number 198, I tried to build my own speed gun using a laser rangefinder. This was a very disappointing experience because the sensors only worked inside a building and up to 40 meters. Outside it hardly got a 7 meter range. Then I promised to check out a rangefinder for longer distances. This is what we will do today. I found a device which promises a range of 1500 meter. And for less than 150 dollars. Completely impossible if I compare it with my first tests. At least not in the bright sun. In my last test I had to go to the underground into our atomic shelter to get the advertised 40 meters range. But even a sizable Swiss bunker is way too small for a 1500 meter test. So this time I have to go outside. And today it is a sunny day. Terrible conditions for a small device like this one which is operated by only two AAA batteries. The sun will be a hard competitor for the sensor inside this box. So I expect 100 meters. At 150 I would be really amazed. The device has two openings in the front and one in the back. According to the datasheet it also can measure speed and angles. You aim the target by looking into the rear lens. I try to use my camera to do the same. It's not easy and sometimes the picture is not sharp. Sorry for that. If I use my eye, the picture is bright and sharp. The optics work like field glasses. It enlarges six times that you get closer to the target. Symbols and a number are displayed as an overlay. One button is to start the measurement and the other is to set the mode. As said before, the device can measure distance, speed and angle. Measuring the angle against horizontal is not very interesting for me. And measuring speed is not easy because you always have to follow the target. I tried it and it seems to work, but I will not test it further. Speed is calculated by performing two measurements in a row and calculate the difference. In this video, I'm solely interested in the range of the device. Let's start with a distance which was impossible with my homemade rangefinder. The distance to a car on the parking of the soccer field close to where I am. Google says 108 meters. And my rangefinder? Also 108 meters. Astonishing. But much better than expected. By the way, the circus here on Google was a temporary installation. It was here for just a few days and Google filmed precisely then. Like that we have a souvenir, because it did no more come back since then. The circus business seems to be even harder than the electronics business. But back to the tests. Now we try our old mill, a very visible building. Its surface is not too reflective and I have no big hope. Google says 438 meters. And the rangefinder? 438.7 meters. Incredible! Now I get a problem. To find well visible targets. The next one is a farm outside the village. It is very far away. Fortunately I use a tripod for my rangefinder. Otherwise it would not be possible to aim at a white surface. Google says 1.18 kilometers. And the rangefinder? Is it capable of getting a reading? We have to remember 
it sends a laser beam which is reflected at the building wall. The reflection coefficient is not at all ideal. And our laser diode is only powered by two AAA batteries. In total, less than 3 volts. And the laser has to compete with full sunlight. Here you see it. 62,000 lux. It is too hard, I think. Let's check. We remember Google said 1.18 kilometers. And our rangefinder? 1.19 kilometers. This is nearly impossible. Not only was it possible to read the distance, but it was very accurate. Also, Google is not entirely right as it is not easy to set the two points on the map. Now I get boisterously and select a horse stable very far away as my next target. Fortunately, there is a white lorry on the parking lot. It is not easily visible by eye. Google says 1.42 kilometers. And the rangefinder? No surprise, 1.426 kilometers. This is very close to the 1500 meters promised. So this rangefinder meets the specifications. I have to admit, I tried the horse stable without the white lorry and it was no more easy to get a reading. 1.4 kilometers seems to be close to the maximum distance. After these tests, we can say this device is worth the money if you want to measure significant distances. The golfers amongst us can now leave and go to the driving range to try to reduce their handicap. The rest is probably interested in how this device works. So far, you did not see many teardowns on this channel. This time I have to do it because I'm very curious to see what's inside. It was not easy to find the small two screws hidden behind the optics in the back. But finally I managed to get it disassembled without destroying the enclosure. The most important two parts are covered by a shield. One has to be the transmitter and one the receiver. But which one is which? Fortunately we have simple means to make IR visible. For the moment I use a photodiode and a resistor. If we connect it to an oscilloscope and press the measure button on the rangefinder, we see that the laser sends signals. And these signals come from the top opening. So the transmitter must be this one. It is coupled into the viewing path using a mirror. Here we have the receiver. According to the datasheet, the laser transmits on 902 nanometers, which is not visible for our eyes. Fortunately, our IR diode has its peak sensitivity at 940 nanometers, which is close enough. The receiver has its own optics. This is reasonable as it has to get all available light. If we look at the other side, we see boost converters. One creates a high voltage needed by the receiver. If we measure its input, we see a pulse of nearly 70 volts. Incredible! But necessary. These receivers use an avalanche diode like this one here. It has a typical breakdown voltage of 200 volts. Interesting is also this figure. The raising time is only 350 picoseconds. Speedy stuff. And here is an ultra fast comparator chip. Maybe this MAX 913 is used to compare the outgoing with the incoming signal to determine the time the light needs for the travel. 10 nanoseconds seems to be fast. But how far does light travel at 300,000 km per second during this time? It's only 3 meters. If we want to get an accuracy of 1 meter, we have to be able to measure picoseconds which is very hard. Fortunately, we can use a modulated signal like the one our IR diode reveals. It starts with pulses separated by 8 milliseconds. This is probably used to get a general impression of the distance. Then a next signal is produced with shorter distances. I assume this signal is adapted to the distance.
exactly as we saw in video number 203. Maybe you want to watch it if you are interested in this matter. If we go on, we find a ribbon cable which is connected to an LCD inside the optics path to display the results. We also find a NE555. No idea what it is used for. And here we see an accelerometer chip. It detects the angle between the device and horizontal. It's not involved in the range finding process. On the other side, there are two big chips. One is marked in big letters with ADKS2. I did not find any information about that chip. The other is an old Altera EMP 3064A. Microprocessors would be too slow for that purpose. The rangefinder consumes nearly 400 mA when the laser is on, which is a little more than 1 watt. Not a lot. For me, it is still unbelievable that this weak light travels 1.4 km, is reflected by a weak reflector and travels back to the receiver where it is detected and separated from all the other IR signals. I only can imagine that they use a very narrow optical filter to reduce the effect of solar light. And these avalanche diodes have to be very, very sensitive. No wonder that the circuits are shielded to minimize interference. Summarized, as said before, I never thought that it is possible to detect such weak signals and get this range with a simple handheld device of plastic for less than $150. Also, it seems to be quite precise. Welcome to the brave new world. One last thing. I used my newly developed Raspberry Pi infrared camera with streaming capabilities to detect the laser beam. Cool! In a future video you will see it more in action, including how to filter light and disassemble it to its parts. Stay tuned! I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.